The swinging pendulum presented a large body of paintings and a related participatory project called the Movable Drawings Project. And the work employed a distilled visual language um, to think about ideas of dualism and slowness. So the, the paintings themselves take the immediate language of the mark and the line into the complex language of painting. And they enfold a lexicon arising from memory, from sensory experience and from ideas of trace. They're an investigation of the pendulum swinging between opposing ideas and opposing modes and systems, for example, improvisation and planning, knowing and not knowing, instinct and logic. And they came about over, over through, through a long period of time, um, process of distillation, slow paintings existing in a world outside of, of the fast imagery that we consume and, and outside of words, and, and they're an invitation to, to look more slowly. The process of distillation was made possible by the, the qualities of encaustic paint, the malleable and transformative nature of this paint, which is molten pigmented beeswax. And then the movable drawings project um, it was presented in the upstairs space in the lab gallery. It's an experimental participatory project and it started out as a project for me in the studio and became a, sp a space for others to explore ideas related to drawing and its possibilities. So in the upstairs space, I um, had a video presenting ideas around the possibilities of drawing, what drawing means to me uh, and, and my practice as an artist, and also contextualizing the project. Then there was a large table filled with lots of objects alongside a workspace for people to participate. And so it, this space extended an invitation to be playful and to create temporary three-dimensional drawings using small found objects, varied backgrounds and a viewfinder. And then optional to take photographs of your drawings and add them to the hashtag on Instagram, hashtag the movable drawings project. So it's an open experimental collaboration with people of all ages. I began making three-dimensional work about 12 years ago. Up until then, I'd worked only two-dimensionally. And I'd arrived at a point in my practice where I needed to expand uh, the work in terms of scale and materials and surfaces and ways of thinking and making. And I became fascinated by the possibilities of drawing, its boundaries with painting, with installation, movement and performance. I was looking at the evolution of drawing in the 20th century and the comprehensive book from the MoMA exhibition online drawing through the 20th century was my main reference at that time. So um, through research and experimenting, I began to make work which explored the boundary of drawing with installation, extending the mark and the line into real space. And since then, my work has explored this and drawing's boundary with painting and with movement. So in the workshop we did during the lab, which was called The Possibilities of Drawing, we looked at Caroline Denervo and Bruce Nauman's movement works as, as examples of work related to drawing and the body. In terms of my inspirations of artists working with expanded drawing practices, I look at a variety of artists from the past century as well as some contemporaries in terms of their use of drawing conceptually and materially. A couple of artists whose work I'd return to to look at again and again include Gago, Gertrude Goldschmidt, um, her dedication to line as object, and I enjoy her two and three dimensional work, uh, her drawings without paper and her immersive architectural linear installations, which really inhabit a space. And I like the strong sense of geometry and organic qualities of her work. I've admired Anna Heckler's work for a long time. Um, I, it's very cohesive and diverse at the same time, and she moves between working two and three dimensionally with many different materials, clay, wire, fabric, inflated plastic forms. And I enjoy the way she engages with materials. It's playful and intuitive. It's a physical way of thinking, she says, of her practice. 
Her work is an open poetic exploration of form through the language of drawing. Um, I would look at Richard Tuttle's work, find his conceptual works with wire and thread interesting. Um, Ten Kinds of Memory and Memory Itself, that piece of work where he laid lengths of string um, in arrangements on the gallery floor, uh, different variations each time he showed this piece of work. His exploration of 3D line is often in a distilled language and I enjoy his playful use of everyday materials and there's a sense of freshness and newness in his, in his whole oeuvre of work which I gravitate towards. I would have looked at Karel Malech's linear kinetic sculptures um, years back during my research into spatial drawing works. I really enjoyed his deep sense of scientific and poetic qualities at the same time. Richard Long's outdoor works, his, his walking, his practice of walking and his conceptual ideas of line. I, I admire Katie Holton's practice, her use of drawing conceptually and materially, her use of diagrams, her alphabet works, and also works more spatially, um, her drawing, earlier crochet drawing works. I've collected objects for a long, long time, uh, things from places I visit, from the kitchen, the garden, from, from walks in nature. Uh, I guess the objects become a kind of record of my activities. The practice of collecting, I think, is a loose, fluid way of seeing and gathering a vocabulary. It's also become a thread for me between everyday life and the studio, bringing my work outside of the studio into everyday life and the people I share it with and sometimes they offer me objects to add to the collection so it brings them into the the work in some way i've made two large pieces of work with found objects the first was called wunderkammer in 2015 which was my own cabinet of curiosity it was an eight foot by four foot booth and it was dimly lit i wanted to create an immersive intimate space for looking and it housed an assemblage of found and collected objects, images, art making remnants, drawings, texts and thoughts, giving the discarded residual and process a place to exist as an artwork. And it was as a piece of work, it was a very natural progression for the, that whole body of work I was making to physically bring together the numerous and varied objects which had informed the thinking behind the work and then to present them alongside the drawings and the paintings allowing threads of connection to be made for the viewer and for myself, a little bit like an extended visual notebook. The second piece of work that I've made with found objects is the Movable Drawings project that was part of the show in the lab that we touched on earlier. And um, during the lockdowns of the COVID pandemic, I began to gather more and more objects and gathering became part of my days fragments of things which attracted me for their shape, texture or colour, such as a length of wire from packaging, a sliver of a carrot peel, a fragment of, of a broken plate, a piece of hair from my son's haircut. And I, I think of the objects, individual stories and memories, each with its own history of its origination, its ownership, it's travel, it's decaying or it's breaking apart. And there's something quite poetic about thinking about that, I think. And around that time, I began making temporary three-dimensional sketches with the objects to generate ideas alongside the paintings I was making. And also began to use larger objects directly on the surface of the paintings, moving them around to explore options compositionally. And after some time working with this process and with the objects, I decided to open the project out as an invitation for others as a space to explore ideas related to drawing and its possibilities. Yes, yeah, I like to reuse things and and repurpose them in life and in the studio where, where relevant. I'm conscious of my consumption of materials um, in studio and in life, and I really do hate waste. Um, a number of my installation works are composed of reused materials. 
All the objects in the movable drawings project are found left over or discarded fragments. You could say they're an assemblage of collected traces. The fact that the drawings made with them are temporary and use seemingly worthless bits and pieces of things is, is a statement of sustainability. With other works also, I've reused materials. I've made three large installation works with felt, uh, felt using felt offcuts and remnants from previous projects and reusing old wool jumpers in part as well within those works. Well, movement has been an interest in my work all along. It ties in with the idea of the temporary nature of all things. Everything is transient and in constant motion. In my earlier work, I was paying attention to movement in the external natural world, observing and responding to the energy and the interaction of the wind and the earth and the movement of insects and birds through the air. The work from about 2015 zoomed out to consider a wider picture, that of our relationship to, with, with the, the vast universe. We are hurtling into the future was a large body of work I made between 2015 and 2018. It was a series of paintings, a monumental installation and a collaborative video work with dance artist Leithan Harriet. And this work was a reflection on time, repetition and motion. So I was thinking about the constant motion in life itself and the Earth's motion. And when I began to read about it, the facts blew my mind. The Earth rotates on its axis at 1600 kilometers per hour and revolves around the sun at a speed of about 30 kilometers per second. And all this time, our atoms are vibrating, our blood is flowing, and there is growth and change and transience. Yet when we're sitting here still, we don't feel any of that motion. So one of the, one of the pieces in this body of work was the collaborative video work with Leed and Harriet, which was called Skimming Stones. And this came about through thinking about body movement as marks, traces and drawings in space and also uh, my love of contemporary dance. So our, our project investigated the relationship between drawing and body movement, how marks, lines, shapes might literally move off the two dimensional surface into space and into the realm of three dimensional form, the body in motion. So this this Working with Leithan immersed me in, into the fascinating area of the body as a medium and also cemented my flirtations with visualizing body movement as drawing. So alongside this project, I was making paintings as well, and I was becoming more aware of the somatic aspect of painting, my, my physical relationship to the paint, to the process as a painter, and the motions inherent, inherent to that process and how these repetitive body movements connect to the muscle memory of everyday life and everyday actions and in, in the domestic realms of, of my life, actions like stirring, rubbing, scraping, or spreading. And then the next body of work is my most recent body of work, The Swinging Pendulum. This also unfolds ideas about the body and movement. I've become more interested in the sense of proprioception, the position and movement of the body in space. And my awareness of it was brought about by movement practices in recent years, particularly the act of swimming. My body in the body of the sea and this shape-shifting line that my body constantly is moving and making and it, it, it feels like a, a mass, like the positive and that the sea is the negative space that it's moving through. So the idea of movement of drawing is, is very alive for me as I visualize and trace body movement with my mind's eye, invisible lines, shapes, like an inscription of the body in space. So these ideas around movement were, were very much part of the, the language of, of my most recent work.